So, the title is 5G Health Risks, Surveillance, and Bioweaponry. 5G, also known as the fifth generation cellular communications technology, has unique properties that sets it apart from all the previous G generations. generations. The introduction of the extremely high frequency millimeter wave bandwidths within the microwave spectrum, the introduction of new delivery systems and pro propagation techniques such as beam forming technologies, phased arrays and others without limit, and the introduction of a flood of new bills to fast track this new technology, robbing people in their local cities and counties, even local tribes and historic preservation sites. The right to control their own communities and homes of any 5G, 4G cell antenna placement by private corporations. Because of this, never before in the history of wireless development has the introduction of a particular technology created such an outpouring of feverish resistance by people all over the world. They have reason. After all, who wants a cluster of close proximity, high voltage equipment, microwave emitting cell antennas placed on the simple light pole right in front of their house every hundred feet? Lena Pu is a mother of two teenage children. Her past work involved restoring sensitive environmental habitat for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. As project manager, she worked with all the alphabet agencies for several years and took that experience and training, as well as uh, knowledge of environment or to environmental toxicology into her new line of work and passion, promoting the health of all life by, by preserving our natural electromagnetic earth through the use of safe technologies, wired tech. She is currently the environmental health consultant for the National Association for Children and Safe Technologies. She is spearheading her own website starting the new year called fabulousfrequencies.com. Please welcome Lena Poo. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I took the chance to come to Silicon Valley, and I thought, wow, I get a chance to be in Silicon Valley where tech, AI, the internet was developed right here, and I get to talk about it and how the historical significance that is tied to 5G that I hope to bring to you tonight. 5G didn't just happen. It's not just, oh, the next cellular generation. It's the next step past 2G, 3G, 4G, now 5G. What is 5G? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so we're going to get into 5G, the, the technology, in a, in a minute. But before I do, I have to explain to you why I have up here military industrial weapon. I don't think a lot of you guys are aware the history of the development of 5G, that it was actually designed back in the early 1900s. It's, it's a military radar equipment uh, that was used by the military, studied by the military, and extensively studied on biological effects um, early, very, very early, because microwave sickness was a prevalent phenomenon amongst the radar operators. So when people today, the industry will deny electrosensitivity exists, it does. And as a matter of fact, the symptoms are getting so strong, so prevalent, so immediate, that whole families being exposed to 5G antennas right outside their homes are getting fully attacked, literally attacked, assaulted by this weaponry, this technology. And how is it a weapon? I will get into that in a, in a moment. I'll show you slides. I'll show you the crime scene. I'll show you the faces and the agencies that are behind this, and also the history, the historical relevance so um, let's, let's talk about 5G, the technology itself. And what... So 5G really is a quantum leap in terms of exposing our entire Earth to, to microwaves. It's not just introducing a handful of microwaves. The FCC, uh, the Federal Communications Commission, which is supposed to be our regulatory agency here in the United States that um, designates uh, which frequencies are allotted for industry to use. Well, they gave us permission, commercial industry, permission to use maybe about 10. You know, each generation, about 10 frequencies. 
That was first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation. But what's the difference with 5G? If you listen to Tom Wheeler's speech back in 2015, June of 2015, he introduces 5G and he says, we're opening up the entire microwave spectrum. That's 3,000 frequencies. 3,000 frequencies, and not just, these are, every single one of these frequencies do not belong on Earth. These, these are frequencies that are blocked by our Earth's ionosphere, all the spheres, you know, that goes on up. It's absorbed by, you know, the, the molecules up in the higher stratosphere and beyond for a reason. As well as, you know, the, on, the, on the opposite side of the spectrum, you've got, you know, the, the, the gamma rays, right? That, that's also blocked. So the only sliver of electromagnetic radi radiation that reaches Earth is just visible light. And here we, you know, we're, we're criminalizing sunlight, but sunlight is what gives all life life here on Earth. It is the only spectrum of energy that belongs on Earth. Everything else is xenobiotic. It does not belong, it's, 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 it's artificial. And whatever is artificial is life-taking. I have never met an electromagnetic radiation frequency that is life Giving. Have you ever read a study that says, oh, by the way, microwave radiation made this person think better, made this person healthier, made this person's heartbeat rhythm, you know, uh, stronger, and, and is it life-sustaining? Of course not. No, because it doesn't belong on Earth. So what did FCC Tom Wheeler announce? He announced the entire bandwidth of entire frequencies. So what does that mean? So if there's 3,000 frequencies and each generation they introduce about 10, so you know, just, I'm just kind of giving you an idea of really the quantum leap of what 5G really means. It's 297G, okay? And people are so sick from being exposed to the combination of 5G on top of 4G. People are already getting sick from 4G and 3G, but you, are adding 5G, which is an unlimited numbers of frequencies because the FCC says, we're gonna increase you know, um, the world's opportunities by, by unleashing this. Now, 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 why would any agency that's supposed to regulate our, our safety and our health do this? You know, it just doesn't make sense, right? Um, well, I, you know, I've been studying this for quite some time, and I always like to go back into history and figure out, well, this, this has to do with, you know, this, this has to do with the early 1900s, and it has to do with the Internet of Things. Now, this is why the FCC has come up with so many myths, and uh, uh, they try to debunk real science. They debunk, they, they try to debunk wonderful reports like the Bioinitiative Report of 2012. If you're not aware, if you're not familiar with this report, please look into it. It's the best compilation of scientists who've come up with negative effects of exposures, and it ranges, the, the levels are so low. It's, it's, it's so low. It, 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 I'm gonna throw some numbers out here. Um, in a bit, you might, might understand it, but the Bioinitiative Report basically says six microwatts over meter squared. Now, there's different ways of looking at the numbers, but I'm just gonna use this because it's, a, it's, it's easy to quantify. Six microwatts over meter squared. All right, this is what the Bioinitiative Report, groups of reputable science based on peer-reviewed science says is safe, all right, or is safer. They actually do not say it's safe. They say it is safer. Now, what, what do the FCC state? 10 million microwatts over meter squared. They say at thermal levels, are there any biological effects? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll go into that some more later. But um, so 5G really should be called 297G. Is that it? Okay, there we go. All right, so here we go. 
Uh, so 5G, I know there's a lot of um, misconception. People say, oh, it's only millimeter waves. Well, because I, as I said before, FCC says it's entire spectrum of microwaves. It's the low band, mid band, high band, the entire spectrum of 300 megahertz through 300 gigahertz. Uh, you're basically, you know, it's, it's, it's the, the full range. So 2G, 3G, 4G had a limit, okay? Uh, the, the highest bandwidth, they started going higher and higher in frequency, 4G, uh, 2.1, that's about what's coming off cell towers. Uh, 5G, now they're, you know, FCC is allowing all kinds of bandwidths to be auctioned off, which is horrific, and it's being done right now while they're rolling out 5G. Um, so here, microwaves fall within the radio waves, and the millimeter waves is that small bandwidth within the microwaves, the 30 to 300 gigahertz. And then 6G, I don't know if you guys are aware that um, they've also introduced 6G. Uh, they're not even finished rolling out the 5G, but uh, people are already getting sick with 5G. 6G is the terahertz. Uh, terahertz is, it rips apart your DNA. It's known to do that. There's scientific proof that it does. And they're using that uh, for health products and devices, electronic equipment, that's where they're hoping to put the terahertz. That's where they're hoping. Uh, part of the reason why I'm so excited to be here tonight is that most of you or many of you guys are health practitioners and you're the perfect audience for me because there's a non-consent uh, non form that I would like to introduce to you that is so vital, so important that healthcare practitioners need to be aware of. Uh, we, we heard many physicians speak about do not give your consent to any procedure you're not familiar with or you're not in agreement with. Same thing with 5G. People are fighting this, communities all across the globe. It's, this is a global phenomenon. They are rolling this out like hotcakes. People, communities are, are fighting this at the local level, and they're saying, we do not give our consent. And they need to be, they need to exercise their non-consent. And, and I will show you some, some ways of how, how, you can, how, you can, how you can do this. Um, okay. okay, so, so why is it so bad that all these, you know, microwaves are, are hitting us? Well, microwaves penetrate our bodies, right? Okay, so, You've got, let's say, the lowest bandwidth, which is a 400 megahertz, so it's about 39 inches, let's say, you know, about a, a yard. That's one sine, I hate to call these microwave sine waves because none of them are actual sine waves. But, you know, to, to, to kind of give you a visual, you know, one wave, one hertz is, you know, one full, full wave, right? So, so 400 megahertz is about the width of this yardstick. And you're moving it down, 800 is what cell phone? 800, 900 cell phone, uh, 1800 cell phone. So that's you know, 15 inches, 13 inches. You know, that's, that's about the width of a, you know, the body. And then, then you've got the Wi-Fi, which is 2.45 and 5.8, and that's five inches to two inches. We're being exposed to various lengths of waves all at the same time. And what is so significant about this? is that the width of the waves resonate with the size of your organs. So you're looking at Wi-Fi in schools. These kids are being exposed to two inch, five inch waves. That's, that's perfect for the size of, you know, brain. Two inches, the eyeball, right? The, the kidneys, the, the testes, the ovaries, the reproductive organs. The heart, and then the millimeter waves are about a quarter of an inch. Super, super, super high frequency. Complete, full absorption of all these waves, 95%. Full body exposure, almost 100% absorption. All onto your skin. And don't be fooled thinking that it's gonna be innocuous. As a matter of fact, it's gonna make you very sick because you have, you have um, 
certain systems in your body that absorbs the, the, the radiation deep into your system through, through your nervous system, through um, you know, your, your blood vessels, and also the brilliant precursor um, effect. Okay, so here's, here's the FCC's level. That's 10 million on the top. And I'm gonna show you one of the sampled small cell gave, uh, um, a building biologist friend of mine uh, gave me a copy of the report and it was 460,000. He got the highest reading, 460,000. That's, that's astronomical. And here you got the bioinitiative report saying six is when, uh, when, when you start seeing effects. Now this family that's being exposed to the 460,000, every single one of them got sick. So this is no longer an electrosensitive issue. This is an, this, these are soliciting immediate effects. And, and this is why it's so important that we, we, we get active in our community, figure out what's, you know, where are they placing these 5G, and um, go to your city and start making noise. Okay, so here, cosmic high, cosmic low, 0 0.0001. So, so th these are actually what existed on Earth before you know, all this electromagnetic radiation started. Um, the next slide, so this is the home. Here, 460,000. So you can see the proximity of what these small cells look like. Basically, it's just like this little funnel that's, uh, the antenna is placed on top of, on top of the light pole. Uh, it kind of, it, it, most of them look like that. It's supposed to blend in, um, but it's, it's a, fat, a fatter tubular look. And it's, you know, it's just a couple of feet away from the home. And they are placing this every three homes, if not every light pole. And here's one in a commercial district area. Here's another design. So, you know, why do they need to place it that close to people? Okay, so this is a map of the small cell antenna that is being deployed right now in San Diego. And you can see it's just peckered. It's just peckered with, with antennas. We, we talked about, I know someone came up here and talked about how you can protect yourself with um, biogeometrics and maybe even Rife machines. You know, there's, there's a lot of sacred geometry that you can use, but um, What's happening is, is this is terraforming our Earth, okay? Uh, you can try to protect your home, but, but what about the rest of the environment? You know, our, our entire ecosystem is being destroyed. Even the inorganic material that support biological material is being affected. The quality of our oxygen, the quality of our carbon, the quality of the water is all being affected by microwaves. And what it does is it, it bends the molecules so that our body doesn't recognize it. Okay, it may not be ionizing, but I like to create a term and call it molecular, molecularizing. It bends it so that it's not recognizable. Whether it's permanent or not, it's, it seems permanent, I hope not. I, I hope we can speak intention into it and, and really change the, the, the structure of it back into its healthy state, but but we have to think about the, you know, the, the future ramification of this on a global level, our Earth, the health of our Earth. A uh, question about um, the, the effect. Um, my understanding was that uh, if you are in the immediate uh, proximity of the antenna, uh, you get uh, most of, of the energy. However, it, that is um, like, uh, not exponentially, but the opposite of it, that it um, shrinks uh, rapidly the further away you are. So your example was the light pole. How much of that energy? It's okay. So so that that photo is a good question. Is a good, people think that cell cell tower. Oh, okay. Um, the the question is that um, proximity to uh, antenna antennas um, should you know should shrink as as you as the further you go. Um, whereas people think you know putting a cell phone right next to the ear that's that's high energy, but you, um, you're actually getting a lot more from these small cell antennas because what I said was 460,000 is an incredible amount of energy and it's constant, it's constant. Uh, it's cumulative exposure, whereas a cell phone, uh, you're probably getting 40, 50,000 microwatts compared to 460. 
So these things are not low powered at all, and at all. Okay, so um, so there are three myths I, I wanted to dispel. Uh, first of all, I, I discussed the ionizing versus the non-ionizing. I don't know why they would call the microwave spectrum non-ionizing. I wouldn't call anybody non-something, a non-entity. Uh, there's a lot of more creative titles you can call it. You can call it molecularizing or mem membrane bending or membrane penetrating. Uh, those are some of the things that it, it does do. And the other myth that um, the FCC and the industry like to use is thermal versus non-thermal. Uh, that's, that's a gross miscalculation. I, I, and when, when we look at thermal energy, that's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's like taking micro to the macro and then with ionizing versus non-ionizing, they're, they're switching it. So it's, that's, that's a misnomer too. Um, we have tens of thousands of studies that prove non-thermal effects is, is where it's at. Uh, averaging versus peak values, um, this, is, this is something I'm gonna show you in a study that I did within a school. I actually I did a blood study of a school teacher where I um, did a blood analysis, a blood morphology analysis, and compared it to the RF value um, abstracted um, from, from that day's reading. So, so we'll, we'll get into that uh, next. So, okay, so this is the school, school so Wi-Fi. The purple is the Wi-Fi exposure of this teacher. She, she wore a device, a dosimeter, on her, on her arm, and it's, this nifty German-made device called MassCheck, $3,000. Measures all the frequencies of that time. It, it measures decked phones, cell, uh, cell towers, uplink, downlinks, uh, smart meters, and Wi-Fi, and uh, just, just all the exposures at that time, but it did not pick up the 5.8 gigahertz. Not 5G, all right, this is, this is gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz. But look at this. My point in, in taking this really wasn't to show every single frequency that it was picking up, but rather to show how, how gross the amount of radiation that the kids are getting exposed to in one school day. And um, this, this is, these are all the waves. Um, the purple is the Wi-Fi, the green, the, the, the light blue, the other colors are you know, duck phones, cell, cell phones, things like that, okay. So, so when we talk about averaging, I said there are three myths. One of the myths that the industry likes to use is averaging the exposures. And when you think averaging, oh, it, it just cuts it in half. Well, not really. It averages out to barely nothing. If you can see the slide to your left, now, now this is a comp this is this machine is made to to coincide with how industry looks at it on an average. So it takes both averaging, and it takes peak levels. So this is how the industry looks at the whoops, the averaging. So this is how they get away with. If you, if you go to the city and you ask them uh, for reports on any cell tower, and go, well, how could it be safe? Didn't your engineers look at the levels? It's, it's, the peak levels are astronomical. And they'll go, no, 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 we looked at the averaging. Now, now one, one illustration I, I like to give people when, when describing averaging is the next time you get pulled over by a cop and he says, oh, you're speeding at 100 miles per hour. And he says, no, 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 no. If you count the time that my car was sitting idle in the garage for 23 hours. The time, the, the speed was negligible. I was really only going four miles an hour. That's averaging. 
Yeah, try that on next time you get pulled over, speeding. <laughs> yeah, say, hey, well, the FCC taught me this. <laughs> I'm using this, you know, I learned this from them. You know, and, and for the physicians, you know, here's another example. Um, I, I like this illustration. So a man slams through the double doors of a hospital. And he screams, he stumbles in, he goes, help me, someone, doctor, please, I need a doctor. I was bitten by a poisonous snake. The closest doctor walks up to him, calmly places an arm, a hand on his arm, and he says, sir, you'll be just fine. I will do none of that. Because over time, the poison in your blood will be negligible in a year's worth of time. So that's averaging. That's how the SEC takes averaging. Over time, it's irrelevant, irrelevant time that they make up. And they make up six minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's illogical. So, oh, here we go. Okay. So if you want to get an idea of where the FCC places their 10 million microwatts over meter squared, I took this graph and I tried to find the top of it where the FCC would state is safe. And I thought, okay, maybe two graphs above, right? Where, okay, so I had, to, I had to scroll down. This is the exposure of the school, really, you know, shrink it down, made, uh, and, and I thought, okay, two, three graphs later, no, it, 50 graphs above, 50 times what you see here, that very top level is where the FCC states is safe. So there's two things going on. They've made the level, the maximum threshold thermal levels, they say is safe, and then they average out what is existing. So everything they do is negligible. Is this, is this a crime of humanity or what? They are. They're commissioned to be a regulatory agency, and this is exactly where I'm going to go into the historical connection that 5G is actually linked to an, an occult past, an obsession for artificial intelligence. It is actually based on World War II. Okay, so World War II never seized. They, after World War II, they brought in 1,600 Nazi scientists, military intelligence officers into the United States. They smuggled them into the United States uh, to, continue, to allow them to continue research. And this is all under the cover of what is now known as Operation Paperclip. And out of Operation Paperclip birthed a whole bunch of other operations, and a lot of them were, were uh, mind control projects like MKUltra, so these are all real, and there was a lot more, a lot more. Um, but we'll focus on Operation Paperclip because that is where one particular Nazi scientist uh, is important to, to, to our topic, and his name is Hermann P. Schwann. He was the scientist commissioned by the United States to come up with our first safety guideline. This is back in 1953. And do you know what his level that he came up with is? 10 million microwatts over meter squared. <laughs> it has not changed since 1953. Okay, so, so this is, this is actually where, where treason, uh, is, is being acted on. We are basing our levels on, on a, a criminal uh, who, who served an enemy nation during World War II, and we gave him our, our national security, um, you know, our, he, we gave our, <laughs> we're, we're entrusting our national security into the hands of an, a Nazi scientist. So that is really, um, really, it brings you to the real reasons why 5G, 4G, 3G, all of this uh, is so nefarious and, and why they're pushing on, 
pushing it on us so, so heavily. There's, there's a lot more to 5G, a whole lot more. Um, and the other reason why I wanted to talk with the health practitioners is that 5G is, is, is linked with, with um, healthcare. And it's, it's intricately linked to healthcare. So um, here is comparison of what is natural to ambient levels. Obviously, ambient is nothing. Uh, so this is, I actually forgot to shut my meter off. So this portion here is actually my home. I don't have any wireless. I don't, ha I don't use Wi-Fi. I don't, I don't even have a smartphone. And all, this, all these little red parts are smart meters, okay? So I was picking up smart meters. But compared to the Wi-Fi in schools, you can just see how, how grotesque that is. So I, I did a, um, I started doing blood study because I'm electrically sensitive. And this is why I studied this so extensively was because I just had to know what the heck was going on. What the heck was going on with me first. And I go, well, what the heck is wrong with these people that's allowing this to happen? And then what the heck, where did this even come from? So, so this is actually my blood. Uh, this is a decently healthy blood. They're separated. The membranes are round, and you don't really see any Rouleau effect. Uh, and then this is my blood on Wi-Fi. So this is when I'm exposed, I get this Rouleau effect. Okay. So the Rouleau effect is is um, really a, a coagulation cascade happening. Okay, so this doesn't look too good, does it? Because your, your body is not getting the oxygen it needs. Uh, and I do get numbness. I get numbness in my extremities, which is uh, one of the telltale signs of electrosensitivity. I get headaches. I can't think very well. Um, as a matter of fact, it's a little tough for me to be here right now. Um. <laughs> You guys are, are a great audience, so you're, you're giving me, giving me um, the energy I need. So this is not my blood, but this is a subject who uses cell phones, lives in a Wi-Fi house, and has no cognizant avoidance of wireless at all. And these cells obviously do not look like healthy red blood cells. As a matter of fact, um, these are echinocytes. Uh, they're spur cells, they're bottom cap cells. And this is definitely um, the kind of, <laughs> kind of cells actually you find in most people these days. There's hardly, there's very little people with normal, healthy, singular flowing blood cells because the ambient level of our microwaves is so prevalent and so ubiquitous. It's Uh, Can you repeat the question? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You're asking for statistics, like how many people? Um, there's, I've been talking with other people who do blood analysis, and they say they've not seen any normal blood. So I, I haven't either. And, and I, I mean, I, I don't do this for a living, but um, I, I mainly do this to, you know, out of, to, to prove a point, like this the students and the school teachers, what they're being exposed to in school. Uh, that, so that was the, the whole purpose of the study. Okay, so, um, so this is the teacher's blood. Okay, so I, I took her blood four times over two days, and over a long weekend, uh, Monday, she was not exposed, it was, it was a holiday. Uh, I took it eight, at 8 a.m. and 3 p.m., and the next day, when she was exposed to school, at 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. Okay, so it was before exposure and after exposure, but I wanted a control day, and this was the control day. Okay, so her blood looks, you know, decent. It's, it's not perfect, um, but it's, it's singular, it's separated, and the membranes looked intact. And then this is later in the afternoon, you can see that she, she was getting some ambient exposure, and so her blood is starting to look sticky. Now this is a healthy teacher, all right? So this teacher eats organic, she exercises, she, she's stress-free, and she lives with no, she does not use Wi-Fi, does not use a cell phone. So she was really the optimal teacher to, to do the study on. And, and even then, she, you know, she's getting, getting affected. And by the way, 
Um, those who are familiar with blood analysis, live blood analysis, which I actually prefer to call um, fresh blood membrane morphology, FBMM, to me that's a little bit more um, specific, is that in the past, before any of our artificial electromagnetic exposures, it would take a long time for blood to look like this. And it would take a really bad diet to reach the state. Now, it only takes a couple of hours of exposure for blood to look like this. Yes, it's it's a um, well, it's it's the 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 elect it's aligning itself with the, with with the electrical charge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, uh, the the question was Rouleau. Um, is the, the stacking of the rouleau is an electrical issue. Uh, yes, it's, it's based on electrical issues. And, and it's also a lot of other issues too, like um, the coagulation cascade is, is also um, get started. Because your body is, it feels like it's being attacked. It's, it's actually like an electromagnetic raping of your internal system. Okay, so if you look at it that way, so your body's creating these uh, fibrins that's causing the blood to coagulate. Okay, so, so this is the day of um, the school day, the morning, and again, the, you know, the blood has kind of gone back to normal. It's good, you know, she's, she's slept, and, uh, but this is after school. I have never seen anything like this before, and I, I suspected it was gonna be this bad. But I, I was so shocked. Um, it was, it was so thick. The, when I placed the glass, the, the slip cover on top of the, the blood, it, it wouldn't press down. I mean, I, I, mean, I kind of had to gently kind of touch it so the glass slide could, you know, sit on it properly. The blood was brown. The first three times the blood was drawn was red, it flowed, it was, it was fresh looking. This time it was brown, it was coagulated. It wouldn't, I, this, is, this is not even Rouleau. I mean, this is, this, is, this, is, this is assault. This is microwave weaponry assault. Yes, she did. She's never had, she's a healthy woman. Very healthy. She she's she's never had a headache in her life, and she started having headaches. So this was 4G, right? Or 3G? Yes, good point. Good point. 4G, 3G, school Wi-Fi. She oh, the reason why we even did the study was the non-consent thing. She was fighting the school. She did not want the Wi-Fi. She said, "Look, I know about this. She's a science teacher. I know about this. I do not consent." They forced it on her. So we, we did the study. She lives very healthfully, uh, is mindful of her natural environment. As you know, she's, she's an advocate for a lot of, you know, a lot of good things, non-GMO, a lot of good things. And this is, this is this heartbreaking, it's heartbreaking. So here's another image. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is like, flesh, you know, it looks like flesh, it's not blood. This is cooking. Yeah, it's, it's. You can see the flows. Yeah, that one, right? Yeah, yeah and, but then it just, just all Go congealed. Back Go back one side. Oh, that one? Be right there. Yeah. And right in there. Mm -hmm. So I zoomed out to show what the look, blood looked like, and it's not clear because I only had a minute to do all these photos, because when you're doing live blood, you, you, you have a time limit. And so I, I didn't want to mess with the settings, but I was so distraught with what I was seeing close up that I wanted to get a, a pan of what the blood is, and it's cauliflower. I mean, the blood looks like cauliflower. It's, 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 it's assault. 
It's so this is what her blood looked like that morning, and then later on, what it looked like afterwards. Yeah, she's, she's shielded that uh, router, by the way. And, and these routers, people think, oh, it's just Wi-Fi. It can't be that bad. You know, the cell phone next to your ear, now that's, that's dangerous. These are industrial strength routers that are meant to connect to 300 laptops in a classroom of 30 students. Her room is particularly bad because she's in a temporary building where the ceiling is only eight feet tall. So if you have a child sitting right directly under the router, his head is literally four feet away from the router. And you wonder why anxiety, depression, and suicide is going up amongst children. Not to mention tech addiction. Okay. So, um, Let's, let's, let's go back to World War II, Nazi scientists. This is Hermann P. Schwann. He's the one who came up with the FCC guideline, but at that time it wasn't FCC. FCC only was commissioned to be our regulatory agency much, much later. But they adopted Hermann Schwann's levels, and they fiercely protect those levels. So they are in, they are complicit along with Hermann P. Schwann's treasonous activities, all right? So FCC is causing, uh, they are in alignment with the treasonous activities of the OSS and the CIA, later known as the CIA, when they smuggled enemy nation scientists into our borders to do scientific research and work and determination, safety determination. Yes. Can you explain the sources? Oh. Uh, Operation Paperclip. This is this is this is. Well, I mean, it's it's all declassified. Yeah, yeah. And um, not not only that, um, Herman Schwann, He has been given the title as the biomedical engineering. And this this is actually very important. And this will kind of explain. Well, not kind of. Actually, will explain to you why. Do they want such high levels? Why is 5G such, you know, such a nefarious thing where they're just like pounding everyone's door down saying, you must have a cell tower in front of your house, okay? It all has to do with artificial intelligence, it has to do with the internet of things, and most of all, it has to do with internet of bodies. This is why they want it, right? This is not, this is not an agenda that was willy-nilly just created out of nowhere. This was all by design. 5G is the capstone, all right? It's the capstone to make all these things happen. It's co connecting inanimate objects and animate objects. Not only connecting them, but controlling them. We're gonna talk about human augmentation next. Okay, so this is, this is Herman Schwann, written by Kenneth Foster, and I'm gonna share with you this was a wonderful gift um, by a good friend of mine, Biological Engineering, uh, written by Herman Schwann. This was actually uh, a publication used as a textbook for UPenn and probably other, other universities. So here we've got a German scientist you know, educating our, our future youth on bioengineering, modifying human biology. Okay, so. So this is one of his studies. Very well aware of the dielectric properties of microwave exposures. That is what his, his specialty was. And he understands that when cells are exposed to, uh, these are free-floating cells, when they're exposed to microwave radiation, there's what he calls pearl chain effect, right here, without field and with field. So he recognizes that effect. And here he's, you know, creating these levels that are just astronomical. And, 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 and throughout his studies, he'll say, oh, only thermal effects, only thermal effects. But he's well aware of these, these other, other effects. Um, so here's another one. Without field, with field. You know, how the cells will orient it, answer your question. 
electrical field force affects not just the pearl chain effect, but also the orientation, the movement, deformation, fusion, rotation, vesicle ejection. That's, that's membrane. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's breaking the membranes apart. And, and if, you, if you guys understand what Martin Paul talks about in all, you know, he, his thing is the voltage-gated calcium channel leaks. That's, you know, part of, part of this idea, the vesicle ejection. Okay, so anyway, so who's promoting the FCC guidelines now? Who's, who's saying, no, we need to hold on to this 10 million uh, microwatts over meter squared? Well, it's his protege, Kenneth Foster. If any of you guys are familiar with the 5G summit, um, Deborah Davis gave us, gave us speech, and I was so happy when I heard she mentioning Kenneth Foster being an industry plant. He's, he's so, so in her, um, I'm, I'm quoting her, she, she says this about Kenneth Foster. This is, this is Herman Pichuan's protege. Foster rewrote the original draft prepared by CDC scientists. So it now reads like an infomercial for wireless devices. He has for years been supported by the industry. I don't know whether they realize the extent to which he was conflicted as an expert. So Kenneth Foster, Herman P. Schwann, they've done many, many studies together. So here you can see that they're in cahoots together. Uh, so Kenneth Foster's in training, right? Okay, so Kenneth Foster, let's, let's, let's go into him and what he's been doing, what he's been working on now. So Kenneth Foster is um, linked to all these, what I think are, what I like to call quack, uh, science-based medicine. He tries to debunk all the naturopathic, homeopathic methods of um, science. He and a whole cohort of them, and it's called science-based medicine. If you go onto their website, they will knock down everything that is actually <laughs> good for you. Uh, it's, 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 it's pretty, it's, it's so obscenely obvious. And when one of the articles that he slams is the bio-initiative report. So you know they got something there. They slam it. And who slams it? Kenneth Foster, who works with Herman P. Schwann. Real science versus questionable science. You know, who, who are you going to trust? Nazi scientists or scientists that are well-meaning, that are doing actual science? Okay, so here's another one from the science-based medicine. They start making fun of electrosensitive people. Lawsuit alleges school Wi-Fi harmed child with electromagnetic sensitivity. All you need from dawn to dawn is someone else to blame it on. That's, I mean, that's, that's just, um, I, I can't even begin to tell you how, how, how destructive that is. Um, and, and he's also in, he has connections with Stephen Barrett, uh, electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Sensitivity is not a valid diagnosis from Quack Watch, okay, your, your guide to quackery, health fraud, intelligent decisions. So, so yeah, his, his connections are very questionable. Kenneth Foster. Okay, so 1953, 10, 10 million, Herman P. Schwann. So after decades of pressure, by government agencies and scientists to tell them to revise it. Just last month, FCC says, no, we're not going to revise our guideline. 70 years later. Okay, so like I said, 5G is really, has a deeper purpose. It's not for better cellular connectivity. It's not for faster speed. It's so that they can control every, every single everything about you. And it goes beyond biometrics, way beyond biometrics. The technology is already here. They can do it um, because at the same time when Herman Pichuan was coming up with the FCC guide, uh, sorry, not the FCC, coming up with the safe, RF safety guideline, you have this interesting character, J.C.R. Licklider. He is the father of the internet. He, like Herman Pichuan, is also into human augmentation. He's interested in the human 
computer symbiosis. If you hear about Elon Musk saying, oh, man must meld with machine in order for us to keep up, he's only a repeater. There's nothing new that he is stating that hasn't been stated decades ago, over 50 years ago, in fact, 70 years ago, because this is Licklider. Uh, in the 1950s, 1960s, this is when the internet's computer man symbiosis was being introduced. Okay. And what does he call it? He calls it an intergalactic computer network. Design a man computer interfaces for online interactive systems. This is an IEEE. This is a guy from IEEE. Dated 1975. Man computer symbiosis, JCR Licklider. Uh, that's, yeah, 1960s. OK. So there's, um, this is where 5G comes in. They need 5G, like I said, it's the capstone to facilitate this whole internet of things and internet of bodies so that they can make these things happen if they wish. Okay, this is their plan. And I feel like humanity is on two tracks right now. We're on the AI track. We are also on a track to save the planet. And I'm not talking about climate change, all right? This, that's, that's, that's a whole other topic. I don't even want to go in there. But, but I'm talking about the electromagnetic health of our planet for all natural living things. OK, so augmented human, if you look at the image, what do they have? They have chips inside the brain. The brain is a computer. And he's wearing a visor. What kind of visor do you think that is? It's virtual reality. And I'm going to read to you some of the things that they talk about at this convention. And it's next year. OK. Brain computer interfaces and artificial intelligence, augmented healthcare. Okay, I want you healthcare practitioners to understand this. Health, augmented healthcare, that's where they would like to see medicine heading. And if you look at our policies, our health policies, it's all there. Health in all policies has nothing to do with individual health, has nothing to do with natural medicine, healthy eating. It has everything to do with controlling the masses, utilizing health as an excuse to bring on this full, massive population control. United Nations, UNESCO, they're, they're all, this is all being masterminded from that level. Okay, so, so this is how they're also enabling the, this fast tracking of the 5G. How do you think, who do you think is able to, to create such a cooperative effort on a global level, to fast track smart meters, to fast track um, common core type education, to fast track one to one technology per student ideas. Sustainability, the idea of sustainability, oh, we gotta, we gotta stop you know, guns and do all these weird things as if it's our problem. Yet, they want to microwave the entire planet with these high voltage machinery and, and say, no, this is gonna help climate change? Let's electrify our, our, our planet more. Uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, these, these things are, are, doesn't make sense. So, so um, continuing on with the, the augmented human, augmented and mixed reality. This is beyond the Internet of Things, okay? This is beyond biometrics, this is beyond facial recognition, scanning, social credit system. They're wanting to augment humans. They want to create a complete virtual reality where we don't even know what reality means anymore. Augmented taste. Interactions between augmented humans and smart cities. Okay, so it's augmenting so that we fit in, the internet of bodies fits in with this internet of things. So there's a, a melding. It's, not, it's beyond the man and computer melding. It's the whole system melding together. And who's controlling all this? 
who is controlling this, this cloud that's supposed to be controlling these smart cities, the smart cloud system? Okay, so smart objects, smart textiles, okay, smart textiles, and IoT augmenting humans, human augmentation, sensory substitution, and fusion, holograms, and smart glasses, exoskeletons and superhuman technologies, bionics and biomechanics. <laughs> so, to, to recap, um, We know where this is going, or we know where they'd like us to go with this. And this is where our non-consent comes in. I personally know that I don't want to see any more deployment of anything. If anything, we need to get rid of what's existing down to a, a safer, much, much, much safer level. And what I've been working on and uh, last year, actually, I was, I was commissioned to, to write a notice of liability for microwave injury. And, and I have this, it's going to be probably about 25 pages long or so, a notice of liability for non-consent and injury by wireless radiation. Everything I covered today is in this document and more. I haven't told you all the things that the FCC is breaking. Okay, they are not just creating treason by um, being in con working in concert with an old, outdated, 70-year-old Nazi scientist level, but they've also done a lot of other criminal activities such as uh, you know, lying about, oh, anything past six gigahertz is safe because we've just expanded it to include 300 gigahertz when there is, when they actually have no, no relevance to do that. So there's, there's, it's all in here. Um, this will be on my website, uh, linasfabulousfrequencies.com, and I will also have my blood study on on this site. This, this is a new website I'm creating, so, so bear with me. Uh, hopefully I'll have it up in a couple of weeks, and, and once it's up, I'm going to be posting things regularly, because uh, there's, there's a lot, lot more that I'm not able to squeeze in this short amount of time. But let's just recap here. Uh, so Herman Schwann's study, this was done in 1977, without field, with field. Here, I've done you know, this, a study with, with a teacher, uh, natural without field, with field, and this is what you get, okay. So, and what, this is Chairman Pai, uh, FCC Chairman, proposes to maintain current RF exposure safety standards. 70 years later. Never should a genotoxin ever be considered a commercial commodity determined by popular vote. And here's the title of my notice of liability. And especially for those who are involved, already involved in fighting the, the radio frequencies, the 5G, 4G in their towns, um, this is something you might want to look into. And uh, there's, there's lots of ways to, to uh, legally convince your, your local authorities, your council members, to not put the 5G, 4G. There's, there's the ADA compliance, okay, the Americans with Disability Act recognizes electrosensitivity as a disability, okay. They have, there's a Section 8 housing that requires them to make um, a home or an area livable for electrosensitive people. Not only that, they cannot have 
barriers to their access, meaning that you can use us as an excuse to fight the 5G, 4G place being placed on all of your, you know, along the streets. Because what if you needed to walk your dog? If you have to drive along these 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 antennas, um, you know, you should not be exposed. There's um, there's a lot of a lot of avenues, and in in my site, I will be linking it to other sites that are actively fighting 5G, 4G, and from there, you know, you're you can really broaden and quickly broaden your your skills and your and your uh, tools. So here's my, my website, uh, linasfabulousfrequencies.com. Yes? Okay, good question. Very good question. Uh, who is legally responsible for the, for putting the radiation? The FCC, the FCC gives the authority to the industry. The industry supposedly comes up, well, does their independent studies or tests, I'm sorry, tests, and then, and then they, they say, oh, okay, uh, we did our own independent study uh, and, it, and the levels are within the FCC limits, which is the 10 million microwatts. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. The way the FCC law is written is that they've excluded any health concern out of the law. Liability. Yes, the liability. Uh, well, that's the FCC law, so they don't care. Okay. Uh, let, 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 me, let me just quickly interject. The Telecommunications Act never states health effects, they only state environmental effects. Okay. So that, can be, that should be challenged. So, so since we don't have a mic for the audience here, if you guys have a question, if you can come up to the side here, we'd greatly appreciate that. And we have about five minutes or so to, to take questions, so thank you. Oh, if you uh, don't mind, oh, if you yeah. can just kind of you know, hold it about five inches from your Okay, here. thank you. So uh, my question was uh, a little uh, more specific. So the uh, lamp post in front of my house are public property, right? Who allows um, anybody to put an antenna on there, right? Wouldn't be the city involved. The reason why I'm asking is, um, what means do we have it, as individuals, uh, beside cutting down the lamp post, to, to uh, block this? OK, um, these lamp posts are found on different properties and depending on if it's in the right of way, if it's city owned public property, they will lease it to whatever industry that asks for it to be done. And they think that according to the Telecommunications Act that they have to abide by that type of rule, but that's not true. As a matter of fact, the Telecommunications Act only says cellular connectivity is required and we have cellular connectivity up the hilt. So there's no need for more. Okay. Oh. Yeah, this is okay. I'm not used to this. That's right. <laughs> okay, Lena, I was hoping you could talk about some of the microelectronics and how that ties in with the um, AI and the need for uh, real-time streaming from as many locations as you can to get to a level of prediction with the AI. And it, these, this has been used by AI developers, including Hewitt Packard here in town, okay, um, basically spraying MEMS, microelectromechanical units. They're invisible to the naked eye, okay? They are a concealed electronic device in the sense that you can't see them unaided. You need a microscope. They're at the micron level and some of them are mesogens. And so, um, Yes, exactly. And so how this all ties in with that, and this is, they've been spraying these. People have them coming out of their body. You can take a piece of tape, find them in your laundry room, open window seals. You can see them with a microscope from Walmart. Okay, you can see these things. And there are smaller ones. There's NEMS and all these other things that they've moved chips, all kinds of stuff they've developed. But some of these you can see, and they're all over the place. People have them in their homes, and all of this is sort of a way of using other people's property and their bodies to see yeah. the AI. Yes, yes. 
Okay, um, this, this lady is talking about nanotechnology and um, the spraying, you know, uh, I would say uh, one of the effects would be Morgellons, um, but it's, it goes beyond just Morgellons. It's, um, it's smart dust that's, you know, a reality. And you know, that, that's a, another topic we, we could go into deeper but again, it's, it's an awareness that this technology is much, much more nefarious than, than, than really you can even imagine. But while we are still able and capable, before the 5G comes in front of your house, when you still have a functional mind, this is a time to, to, to take action. And really, grassroots level action is the most important. Um, and, and from there on, you know, we, we need to start a coalition to, to stop the spraying, you know, the, the geoengineering, um, also the vaccinations. The vaccines have nanotechnology in them, too, and it's all working in concert with all the electromagnetics. Yes? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that in a second. Comments actually. One is this whole issue oh, yeah. about things, uh, the whole issue about things being weaponized. If you go on YouTube to a capability called True Stream Media, they did a piece about a NASA report that was done in 1985 talking about how many ways they want to weaponize everything everywhere. So <laughs> it's right in a NASA report uh, that you can get on the web and at True Stream Media. They do a lot of good stuff. But about what you can do, there was just a piece in the Palo Alto local paper about the mayor of San Carlos was getting a lot of form letters about people did not want the 5G. And he says, well, I don't think there's really any problem with it. This is just fake news. And oh, by the way, the state of California, the way the law is for the cities, is they're only allowed to make very minimal resistance to where the cell phone companies want to put them. It's like whether it's cosmetic or not or something. And so they've got the laws set up. They've got even the local papers manipulated. They've got the local p politicians manipulated. So I would suggest face-to-face -face communications every chance you get because it's not going to get through the media and it's going to have to be a complete sea change in the politics, which is not going to happen right away. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, um, I'm sorry, quickly to answer that, um, that's true. We, we have to not give our consent, vocalize this in mass, because these are all revelation of the method that has been rained down on us for decades, and they will have to um, stay their ground and, and stop what they're doing if enough of us say we do not consent. The, the most important thing that I, I say is um, I, I kind of find solutions at different, every level, I, I try to do something um, to, to help. For myself, on a personal level, um, you know, I, I, I pray, I, I meditate, I, I practice uttering I do not consent um, when I see something that, that is harmful, that's hurting someone else. And on a, on a local level, uh, I started a grassroots movement uh, in my own town, and I, rec and I suggest that everybody get involved. That's actually probably one of the most effective ways, because we all, if we all fight our town, we can stop this madness, okay? Um, and and I, I fought cell tower bills on the state level, and, and this is how I found out about all the myths and, you know, the whole legal game that the FCC and the industry likes to play on us and prey on us, and I've, I've, I've debunked all of them, and it's all in my notice of liability. Um, and I think the most important thing you, you can do is, is at the grassroots level. Find out what the government is doing, and if they are not cooperative, there are legal means. There are, are logical legal means that you can, you can do. And, and I'll actually get into detail with that, um, on that, in my, in my website. Okay. 
Um, I'd like to make one last comment on um, grassroots activity. And one of the worst things that you can do if you want to influence politicians is to send form letters. It means that you're too detached from the issue to write your own letter and they will dismiss it. So um, if you do not know how to write your own letter, take the form letter and rewrite it. Just take words and phrases out of it and stuff, make your own letter and send it. And that way your letter will have 10 times the impact that a form letter would have. Thank you, everyone. All right. Round of applause. Thank you.